three, two, one. Hey everyone, you're watching Ash on Comics. My name is Ash, this is Stan the Man, and this is today's comic. Batman, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3. Now, I just read this comic. I didn't really even hardly think about it too much afterwards. I'm just going to simply dive in to what I thought. Uh, first, a little bit of what I thought about the comic before I read it. Um, I was of two worlds on this. <laughs> oh, look at that. Thematically, two worlds back. Um, I, I'm a big Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles fan from the old days, like pre-cartoon days, the, the original Eastman and Laird's uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles when they were assassins trained to get revenge for Shredder. They weren't heroes on a half shell. Um, I miss those days. Those are still my favorite turtles. Um, I do accept the evolved, the evolution, you know, the new Cowabunga turtles. I don't like them when they're overly cartoony and silly, but things change. You know, Batman used to have a gun. Uh, they don't always stay exactly the same. So you got to be willing to kind of adapt and go with the flow a little bit. Um, and as long as the turtles can be uh, a little edgy and not completely silly, I can appreciate them. When they're the cartoon turtles, I just can't jive with. Anyways, so I like turtles. Um, I was a big fan. I love Batman. So it's like, oh, turtles and Batman. Except I don't like cheesy, goofy crossovers that, you know, are silly. Um, so I also don't like miniseries really that much. Um, I like, I mean... A good miniseries can be amazing. Dark Knight Returns, Watchmen, like you, those wouldn't exist without miniseries. So they have their place. Some of my favorite comics of all time are miniseries, but yet most miniseries suck. And especially these days, miniseries used to be special. The Wolverine miniseries, the original Punisher miniseries, they used to be like, oh, we we, we can't really do a full comic ongoing, but man, we got a story to tell. Um, so. That being said, this book came out, and I saw it, and I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. And they, they, my comic store pulled it for me. And one of the things that my comic store does is they will put comics in my pull list that they predict that I might like. Now, that's good and bad because, you know, I can get something that, oh, I wasn't thinking about. I didn't know this was coming out. Thanks for pulling it for me. And sometimes I have to be like, no, thank you, and I feel bad because I'm like... You know, they're like, oh, you don't want it? And, you know, it's like, no. But so they pulled this and I told them, I was like, no, I don't want it. And they're like, oh, you don't want, you know. And they even pulled the alternate cover for me, which is what led to me buying the book anyways, because it's the Kevin Eastman cover. I'm a big fan of Kevin Eastman's art. So I, I gave it back and I went on the shelf. I always get my pull list and then I walk to the new shelf and I browse to see if there's anything I want to grab that's not on my list. And I just stared at it and I thought to myself, I was like, you know, it's one thing you don't like pull, you don't like cheese dogs settled. Oh my goodness. They're just like, oh, you know, let's just all make noise. Um, it's one thing to have waste, wasted miniseries that don't really matter, but you couldn't do this as an ongoing series, right? And I was like, you know, I do like Turtles, and I don't really want to buy the Turtles ongoing series. I don't have enough faith in IDW. Like, some people are kind of pushing me, like, oh, check out Turtles, Ash. I'm sure it's, like, okay, but I want Turtles to be great. So I was like, give this a try. You like Batman. You like Turtles. You like James Tinney in the fourth. You like this cover. Six issues. Give it a try. I was like, all right. So I picked it up. And then they gave me a weird look. They're like, you just told us you didn't want this. I was like, oh, okay. Um, so here we are. It opens up. And we see some minion talking to Krang. Krang, one of them has escaped. What? How could you have allowed this to happen? Forgive me, master. Are we in pursuit? There's no telling where they might have gone. No, there's one place he could go. Come now. It's time to see the fruit of our labor. And then you can see... This big city, it's Gotham, <clears throat> and the blimp's going over, and then we see Batman. There's something wrong. Sir, there's a storm gathering. When it breaks open, it's going to be bad. I think I should pay a visit to Lucius tomorrow. 
It has a natural quality. I don't like it. I didn't realize we had gotten into weather forecasting business. <laughs> I love Alfred Quips. Um, there's a lot you can miss in a storm. It makes the job harder. Speaking of making it harder, dog, just steal the show. Just, you know, we'll wait on you. Don't worry. Don't worry. Okay, so um, we see Batman doing his normal Batman things. We're introduced. And then we get this visage of him, and it's clearly not the Batman we're used to. His costume is a little different. Look at the bat symbols kind of running here. Let's see if we can get a better look. Um, and so you're like, okay, this is interesting. Um, and it becomes quite clear without the author having to tell us, they just show us, that this is an alternate reality. Which you'd kind of expect, obviously, Turtles are crossed over. Um, this is an Elseworlds book. But it's not Elseworlds in the sense of, imagine the DC Universe as we know it had the Turtles pop in, you know? And it's, it's imagine a completely different world where T Batman and the Turtles existed together in, like a, in, in a unique universe. Um, as you're going to find out in this book... And here we see uh, Harley Quinn is part of this thing called the Smile Clan, not not the Foot Clan. Uh, I don't even know if the Foot Clan exists. And I should also preface at this point, I never read the Batman Turtles 1 or 2, nor the Batman Teenage Mutant Turtles animated series comic book um, that's based, you know, that's like tied into, anyways, the Nickelodeon. Um, I'm interested to check those out because... So far, everything that I'm seeing, I'm liking. I, this is definitely a book I want to like. It's in my wheelhouse. Um, so she's part of the Smile Clan. I don't know if the Foot Clan exists. I'm presuming not because this feel, this world feels like a, a hodgepodge between um, the DC Universe or at least Batman's world and the Turtles. Um, so Harley Quinn is part of the Smile Clan. And look, you can see she's got two swords. So she's kind of a... A ninja warrior thing um, and this lo uh, looks like Bebop and Rocksteady but it's actually Clayface and uh, Killer Croc which I thought was interesting and here we have uh, what is that Deadshot and anyways they're all part of the the Smile clan so there is ninjas too um, and Commissioner Gordon is still Commissioner Gordon and these guys are criminals and they're trying to stop him. And then we see the leader of the Smile Clan. Is anyone out there online? Ha 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 ha. No. And he gets kicked over the side. And then we see. Now we don't see this character's name. But it's obviously purple green. Smile. It gets reference to the Joker. But it's clearly not the Joker we know. This is as if Shredder and the Joker were mixed. Um. So it's symbolically the same, but not the same. Um, and he's facing off here and says, I don't even have to kill your men, Jim. I just offered them a place in my family, a place in my clan. Turns out they were sick of being on the losing side. And Jim's just like, oh, no. Smile is the only order left in this city, Gordon. You should have realized that by now. It's pretty sinister. Um, and at this point, I'm really enjoying the book. And this is not where I expected it to go at all. I expected it to be one of those weird things where the turtles somehow just pop into Batman's world. You know, whenever those crossovers that I've, like I read Batman Predator, or things in the past, it's just the worlds kind of cross and that you just pretend that they coexist. But this whole like alternate reality, this reimagining of Batman as if he was you know, grew up in the, in the turtle verse. Um, and you know, the turtles grew up in a verse where Batman existed. Like it would just be a completely different world. Um, shredder is actually, the, you know, a joker character. Anyways, it's just cool. Um, this would be like if Kevin and Eastman had been in Batman, <laughs> uh, Kevin Eastman and Laird. And so I like that. I like this. It's just a total reimagining. It's total else worlds and let's see where they go. It's really cool. So Batman's um, fighting, I don't know, <laughs> Smiley? I, I'm just going to call him Smiley because I don't 
they don't really say his name. Um, and there's this artifact that he's going after, supposed to hold immense power. They say this stone came from, from another dimension. They say it has power beyond belief. I think I'm, I think first I'm going to use it to cave your skull in. Yeah, oh yeah, they do say his name, I guess, right here. Yeah, Smiley, I don't think so. The bat didn't come alone. Pow, pow, bam, pew. And dun da da da. Hey, look. It's Raphael. But why is he dressed with a red hood? I know the R is Raphael, but that uh, looks like a Robin symbol. You, you get to see what I'm saying? Like, they, they merged the two. Ha! Huh. He did, did he? I'm gonna eat you. And then here comes uh, Clayface. You're gonna pay for that, kid. Actually, I wouldn't move if I were you. The muscular destabilizers you're standing on are top of the line. What the? Don't say I didn't warn you. Babies, gobble those mean fat turtles right up. And so she sends the attack dogs, and then here comes Michelangelo. Whoa, man, that's just straight up rude. Aw, oh, the babies love me. They just smell the pepperoni on you, man. Pizza is always the path to peace. And the dogs are licking up the bird. And it's its not really realistic, but the turtles, that's kind of the thing. Like, you're, you're reading a comic book about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Like, you, if you start, if you stop the pause and go, wait a minute, uh, you're, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Deadshot's like, hold your positions. You know I can hit you all with a single bullet, so don't try me. This is the Smile Clan you're dealing with, not Amateur Hour. Oh, okay, shit, it's getting serious. Yeah, that's so, huh? Could've fooled me. Then here comes, you know, now Donatello, make, or sorry, Leonardo's making an entrance. Leonardo's my favorite, I can't believe I messed up his name. Um, oh good, now we just have a whole army of ninjas to fight. Don't worry, man, they'll smell that pepperoni goodness and surrender. This is good, fun turtles humor. It's not necessarily like super witty jokes. It's just humorous banter. And it's not done in that stupid, pretentious, like Bendis want everything to sound like Big Bang Theory. Like it's just, it's cool. It feels like turtles, but without going overboard. Somehow, I don't think that's going to work this time, Mikey. It's over. You really think so? Bam, and he clobbers him in the face with the stone. Wait. And then Batman now sees something. There's Joker on one side, Smiley on the other. Joker? I don't understand. I'm no Joker, Batman. I'm deadly serious. Blow the ceiling. Sure thing, Giggles. And then they blow the ceiling, and Batman's like, go, the ceiling is a distraction. To let them escape, can't let them get away. No, dude, you're hurt. We need to get you home. And then they throw down their little, uh, little exploding ninja. I forget what these are, things are called. Uh, you know, little uh, smoke bombs. Oof! Did that monster get the stone? Yeah, Kamish. I'm sorry. We were outnumbered until the freak show came to town. What's your name, son? Officer Jones. Casey, sir. Yeah, and I was like, yes, because the whole time I was like reading it, I was like, oh, Batman kind of feels like a replacement of Casey Jones, but not quite. And I'm really glad because this is an amalgam. Like, they, uh, yeah, so it was just cool to have Casey. And he's like, you didn't take the Laughing Man's offer? No, sir. I know what order's like. Ninjas, giant monsters, men in costumes. You ever get the feeling that the world is wrong, Casey? Oh, just about every day. And then... You're right about that. Oh, mysterious person. Now, I didn't cover, I kind of skipped over in the beginning, but we saw like a Terminator moment where someone kind of zaps in and takes this person's trench coat and they're like, oh my God. And he's like, and so here's that person. Um, and we go over to Wayne Enterprises and we get the security guards talking about, oh man, I got a pizza, gets ordered, and then we just order to throw it away and then don't understand, goes on the garbage chute. But we, the reader, of course, know that. It's for the Turtles. Now, this is not the Wayne Enterprises we understand. Um, there is no Alfred, as far as I'm aware. Uh, Splinter has taken the role of Alfred. 
and he talks about, you know, Bruce is kind of feeling depressed about things, and he just doesn't feel like the world is right, and he's explaining how I keep having these dreams where I fight alongside a human boy with dark hair, and da da da, and I recognize Smiley, I, I call... I, I called him Joker, and Splinter's just trying to comfort him and being like, no, no, you're okay, the, the world is as it is, you know, everything's good, and he's explaining his little history of, like, how he found him after his parents were killed, and he brought him in and raised him with his brothers, so the turtles are his, you know, figurative brothers, and uh, that's the way things are, and so he's, you know, here you go, he's getting comforted, comforted, and, um, as everything's winding down and having that little moment, there's like, no, you're going to need a lot. So he's like, maybe all I really need is sleep. No, you're going to need a hell of a lot more than that. What the? This is all wrong. And you all know it. The pieces of this world aren't in the right places. They've been screwed with you, screwed with to make you all weaker, to keep you from fighting back. And they're like, huh? Dun, dun, dun. And the big reveal, you're like, oh, snap. It's original, old school, Raphael. Well, like, black and white, no stupid color headbands, original Turtles that I loved. And I was like, badass. I mean, I don't know who drew this. This looks like a Kevin Eastman rendition. Um, I can't tell. It's up to us to set things straight. And I promise, it only gets bigger and weirder from here. And I am sold on the ride. I know a lot of people might look at this and just be like, this is bonkers, bizarro. Uh, but I, this is what I grew up on in comics. I was a big X-Men guy, and I liked a lot of Marvel because of that. But I was also a big indie. Uh, Turtles was one of the first things I found. And it just, the weirdness of it was cool. And I guess maybe because I was a young kid, you could you could accept things a little more. Uh, I mean, truth be told, I did actually appreciate the more straightforward Turtle stories versus, like, the Foot Clan and stuff when it felt more like an homage to a Frank Miller book. But I also was... F what kind of made Turtles unique and not just a ripoff of, like, Daredevil stories and stuff was the fact that you had weird shit like Krang and Bebop and Rocksteady. And um, it was common for them to go to different worlds and universes and... It, this book is just bizarre. Like it just, you're like, oh, okay, and that's that's just the way turtles were, and it just works. And I really appreciate. Uh, oh, there's more to the book, by the way. So we get a little epilogue. You were right, Master Raphael's on a new Earth Prime. We're bringing the Ultra Technodrome into orbit now. Excellent. It's time they understood the rules of Krang's multiverse. So there's Krang. Here's the credits for the book. Um, I really appreciate that they chose this art style, uh, Freddie Williams. They could have done a more traditional, like, superhero comic DC artist type thing. I don't think that fits with the Turtles. Um, I love, love Kevin Eastman's art. Um, Freddie Williams does a really good job of evoking the same aesthetic while not necessarily ripping off the style. Um... He's not the greatest artist. His layouts could use work. His dynamicis, dynamicis, dynamicism, I don't know if that's... This shot here just looks like Leonardo's just floating in air and then Deadshot's just like, oh, it's falling away. Like, there should be an action showing, like, a swing of a sword or a punch or something that reflects why he's moving. It's just two characters... It looks okay from like for a, a, a pinup, you know, like, but ultimately it's not really telling the story of what happens. You, you have to extrapolate more than you should. And this is nitpicking, but just from an aesthetic, it looks like the way I want turtles to look. And it, it's not so much that it takes away from the Batman side either. And I don't know. It's just, it's just right. So I'm very happy with this book. It's not going to blow anyone away, but... If you like what I described about Turtles, if you like that bizarreness and the weirdness and just if you like the t the banter between the characters and things and you enjoy Batman at all, this is a really good marriage of the two. And it's just fun comics. Um, so seriously, get this book, 
grab a slice of pizza and have fun. I think I've told you everything you need to know. If you look at this and go, that looks completely stupid. If you don't really understand turtles, probably stay away. <laughs> like this book's, I don't think it's going to win you over. You either appreciate turtles or you don't. But if you do, this is a fun turtle. This is more of a turtle story than a Batman story. So think of it that way. If you're if you're a Teenage Mutant Turtle guy, this is in your wheelhouse. If you're just a Batman guy but not turtles, maybe not. So thumbs up for me. Um, hope if you enjoyed this book or you hated this book or have any feelings about it, whatever, leave comments below. Like, subscribe, rock the bell, share the videos, leave comments, all the stuff you're supposed to do. I know this was a long video. Hope it was worth your time. Stan, thanks you. Thanks, Stan. We thank him. It's time for another JL8 webcomic, number 28, by Yale Stewart. Your morning paper, sir. Thanks, Alfred. More Count Chocula, sir? Yes, please. <laughs> Alfred, phone! Phone, sir. Ring, ring. Good morning, Kent residents. Priority one alert. It's Bruce, dear. Elbows off the table, please. Hello? Have you read today's newspaper? Aw, oh, don't spoil Marmaduke for me. It's... What? What? The paper ran an article about the purse snatching we stopped. Cool. No, not cool. You don't know what it said. Clark, it refers to us as kids.